everybody. Here we go again. Uh, Devin. I'm Danny. We're adventure happy. Where are we at? Uh, well, right now we're just off the Kootenai Highway. Yeah, we're at the Vista Lake Trailhead. We are doing a trail that doesn't really have a name, or it's got a lot of names. I don't know, we're gonna hit some cool spots along the way. Major Lake, Twin Lakes, uh, Shadow Lake, Gibbons and Whistling Passes. This is the starting spot. Uh, so I think that's Vista Lake kind of behind me there. Would make sense. Yeah, so this is where we're starting out. There's a weird change of, uh, change of pace. We actually get to start by going down, which just means we have to go up more later. Yeah, we're gonna drop down there. It is July long weekend. Canada Day. Canada Day. Happy Canada Day, everybody. Ooh, we only really have two days to do this so we are going to be crushing some mileage for sure looking at about 28 kilometers today to get to Egypt Lake we just ran into a couple here who's dropping their car off because sort of the more common way to do this is to do it as a through hike starting over at um, Healy uh, Healy Creek which is over by Sunshine Village Ski area. So they're dropping their car off, they're driving to the other side, and then they're gonna hike into Egypt Lake, which is like, I think, 10 kilometers or something like that, uh, the way they're doing it. But it's like 28 for us, so we got a long day ahead of us. It's gonna be fun. Packs are light though. Packs are relatively light, getting lighter every time, leaving a lot of extra stuff out on this trip. Um, didn't bring anything for building fires, we didn't build it, bring anything for like uh, our hammock that we bring sometimes for just chilling out in, our uh, tarp, we didn't bring any of that because it's supposed to be just hot and beautiful this, uh, for this whole trip, about 25 and sunny, so looks like it's going to be a good time. So this is the Vista Lake little trail board, let's show you this before we get moving. You all there. What we're really looking for here, it's um, Vista Lake down below us, we're going to go up along Arnica Lake Trail, get to see Arnica Lake, Twin Lakes, and up over Gibbons Pass, Shadow Lake, lake Lodge is sort of where it uh, ends as far as this map goes, but it does go way down south from there and as we're well. going to go this way, or are we going to go this way? Uh, still not decided. Okay, we'll, well see. we'll go one of these ways. Yeah, so then... do a little loop there and then come back along the same route. So, yeah, looks like it's going to be a good time. Um, we're going to get moving. Here's a closer look at Vista Lake. Very, very pretty. Very, very still at the moment. Huh. Straight across from us here is uh, Storm Mountain. We've seen a lot of a lot of that because we're kind of going up around the north northeast side of that. A very peaceful and very beautiful day. It's probably about 20 degrees out right now, sunny. Slight breeze, pretty much perfect hiking weather. Did need to switch into short mode from the pants though, because it gets warmer. Especially when you're moving. Yep. Especially once we start going up. Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's been a nice start. I mean, we're not very far in, probably only like a kilometer and a half or something like that. But it's been all downhill, which is nice. Get you, get you warmed up, as opposed to going straight uphill like we usually seem to have to. It's usually like parking lot, straight into vertical. Got the blood flowing anyways. Go. Very pretty. We started out down here. We're still not very far in, only like three kilometers. But we came to some decent elevation, that's for sure. We already cheated to some very nice views. Castle Mountain off on the, on the 
those trees there. Huh. Very nice. Tough going so far. The trail's in great shape, which is nice. We're moving at a pretty good clip, about four kilometers an hour. But it's been challenging so far, just with uh, the sun beating down on us. And uh, yeah, it's just been kind of relentless uphill since we left uh, Vista Lake there, which was the low point on the whole hike. <laughs> so, very nice spot though. Really looking forward to getting up uh, a little bit higher here so we can start getting some better views. Should have Arnica Lake coming up in a, another kilometer or two here. Yo, diggity. Break time. It's a good spot for it, I'd say. Beautiful. So we made it to Arnica Lake. Um, it's just sort of sitting at the... I think this is the east headwall of Storm Mountain, right here. So, there used to be a glacier going all the way up to the top of that rock. <laughs> and left behind this very pretty little lake here. See a few fish jumping out there. So we're about uh, five and a half kilometers in so far. Um, we've gained 577 meters of total elevation, so that's what 1,900 feet or something like that. So it's been some some tough sledding. Got a couple of nice flat spots towards the end here. <laughs> I definitely uh, boosted my morale a little bit, and uh, so is finally getting to see some really nice views. It's a beautiful spot. I could hang out here all day, but we obviously can't because we still have a long way to go. But we are going to grab a little snack, a little water, and I might just have to splash around in that water a little bit to cool off. Not <laughs> Not quite. Trail science. So, yeah, Arnica Lake where we are, Twin Lakes where we're going. Uh, well, Twin Lakes where we're passing by anyways. We're not staying here. So I'm staying there on the way up. We are staying there on the way back, though. Great little spot to stop for rest. Uh, Arnica Lake is named for Arnica flowers. It's pretty little yellow flowers that bloom all along the banks of the lake. Ooh. Arnica Summit. Ooh. It's all down here from here. Oh, do all downhill from here for like two kilometers and then we need to go uh, up over that pass. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> Spot though. Beautiful. Yeah. Let's just camp here. I think they might frown on that sort of thing. Probably. Yeah. Alright, onward and upward. Raw pocking. Raw pocking? Rock hopping. It's like they're laid out just right though. Didn't get my feet wet at all. Hey, trail sign. Thinking this is the junction for Twin Lake Campground. Up a Twin Lake. Given Pass, that's where we're headed. A little map of the campground. So this lake came behind us. This way is Upper Tip Twin Lake. We're going to head up this way towards Lower Twin Lake and Gibbon Pass. Yeah. Got a long way to go. We're about a quarter of the way through. Just over a quarter of the way through the hike for today. So, yeah, it took us about three hours. Looking like a solid 12 hour day. Fortunately, when we get up to Gibbon Pass, there we should start seeing some really spectacular views. So we're just passing through the campground. 
yeah, this is where we're camping on the way back, actually. So, you'll be seeing this. There's one of the first tent plants from there. Good little spot. Yeah, it looks like there's a handful of them. They seem pretty close together, but, uh, I don't know, should be nice. Looking forward to it. Plus, it's pretty close to the end. We decided to do this uh, loop kind of a ridiculous two day adventure. Uh, two, and a half. two and a half day adventure. Uh, just because we wanted to get out pretty early on Sunday and get back to Edmonton at a reasonable time. So, yeah, most people do this as more of a three night trip. One of the nice things about doing it that way is it opens up a lot of side hikes, little uh, areas you can go and explore. I'm thinking we're probably not going to be able to do a lot of that just because we're going to be doing close to 30 kilometers already today. Yeah, no doing that. Danny has vetoed any uh, side hikes for extra scenery. Another platform. Yeah, it does. Looks like a pretty nice little camper on the... I'm sure it'll be filling up later this this afternoon. It is a long weekend, so I would expect all the sites along here to be full. Um, looked like it was pretty close. I feel like I got the last spot at Egypt Lake, actually, when I booked it. And that was a few months ago, so reservations are definitely encouraged if you're planning on coming through this area. That's uh, Lower Twin Lake right over there up against the uh, against the mountain. Pretty little waterfall feeding it. Very nice. Uh, that's a really nice waterfall actually. Might be worth a detour to go over there on the way back. We'll see. We'll see what kind of view we get of it actually up ahead here. <laughs> Doing good? <sighs> I seem to have found my stride. Good, good. We're about, hurt, though. Yeah, we're about 12 kilometers in. Given pass. Sort of ring with some nice peaks. Stubby little trees you see in that alpine area. Lots of pretty little wildflowers. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a good hike so far. The trail's in great shape. Yeah, it is. Um, the muddy sections. But. Yeah, very, very minor bits of mud, or small stream crossings and things like that. But yeah, not much in the way of obstacles. And like, the trail itself is just really nice. You don't have to deal with a whole ton of roots and rocks and things like that. It's just nice, soft, well-packed, well-maintained trail. I expected us to be moving a little bit quicker, but uh, uh, things are how they are. Yep. I guess we're just not in full-on hiking shape yet. Or we're just getting old. Could be that. I do have a birthday coming up next week, so I'll be even older. Anyways, oh, we're going to keep go pushing on a little bit further, I think. Um, it's pretty much a bunch of downhill from here to get to Shadow Lake, and I think we're going to try to stop there for... For lunch, um, nom, noms. that's the plan at the moment, anyways. So we will be able to cover the next four kilometers relatively quickly. Mm-hmm. Downhill and get some food in us and rest a little bit. Oh, it's nice when the sun ducks behind those clouds and the breeze picks up. Cool. All right, let's keep moving. Didn't want to film right at the uh, peak of the pass there, just because there was a family having lunch, so didn't want to interrupt them. So we're coming down the other side there. There's a nice little cairn uh, with a plaque on it marking the, the high point of the pass. We'll get a picture of it on the way back. Uh, but as you start dropping down, you start seeing some peaks. Peaks off in the distance there. If I had more time to do some research, I would be able to list some of those peaks for you, but unfortunately, been busy. We were lucky just to get out this weekend. 
flood. We're trying to power through this whole thing in two days uh, rather than taking three full days. It's just we have a bunch of stuff to do around the house. Home ownership is uh, a lot of work I'm finding. <laughs> For those of you who want a more refined backcountry experience, there it is Shadow Lake Lodge. There's also a campground here. Some people can't come in and camp if they like, but uh, it's just a whole load of really, really cute little cabins uh, up against Shadow Lake. We're not going to see the lake because um, we're heading the other direction. We will see it on the way back for sure. So you'll get a better view of this probably tomorrow when we're coming back through this area. But yeah, I just wanted to show the uh, cabins real quick. It seems like there's quite a few of them. Um, yeah, very. Very nice little spot. Very expensive, I believe, but it is uh, definitely a, a cool option if you want to go a little bit more high-end in your backcountry experience. Yeah, and if you have the funds to be able to go. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I think it'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, this whole uh, trip that we're doing could essentially be done without a tent if you were so inclined. Egypt Lake, there's a shelter, but it's probably not going to be quite as fancy as the uh, lodge here. But yeah, you could stay at Egypt Lake Shelter and then Shadow Lake Lodge and not even bring a tent with you if you if you wanted to. This seems like it'd be kind of a nice option. It looks like this is the campground, the Shadow Lake campground. Junction for Faro Creek, and Faro Creek is what we're gonna follow all the way to Egypt Lake. And then tomorrow, we're gonna we're gonna save the views essentially for tomorrow. It's probably not gonna be super interesting. Although it's supposed to be a nice, you know, walk along next to a creek. Um, it's not the spectacular views that you get over on the other side of this loop, um, going over Whistling Pass. We decided we were going to save that for tomorrow. Also save us a little bit of elevation today. Because uh, it's, I guess, pretty gentle. Food storage, cooking areas. Uh, just a gentle uh, uphill along the stream to get to Egypt Lake. So We figured we'd beat ourselves up enough today. We'll save the, uh, the harder stuff for tomorrow and also the more rewarding stuff, the, the views and whatnot. Bikes! <laughs> this is cutoff point if uh, you're cycling up towards Shadow Lake Lodge. So this way here is the way we came in. And this way here leads out to Highway 1 and sort of the most direct access to Shadow Lake. You can ride a bike up until this point. And then you can lock it up over there and then hike up that way the rest of the way. But more importantly, Faro Creek is up this way, which leads to Egypt Lake, which is where we're going. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was a really nice section of trail, I must say. Uh, very well maintained. I'm guessing that's sort of part of the deal for the lodge. They need to keep things very accessible. Yeah, makes sense. So, yeah, if you want an easy way to get up to Shadow Lake, that's going to be your best bet. The uh, Red Earth Trailhead, I believe it is, just off of Highway 1, and then up, uh, up that path. We saw it driving in. Yes, we did. Now we need to go up this way. We're essentially just following Faro Creek the entire rest of the way up to the uh, up to Egypt Lake and our campground. I'm afraid to look at how much mileage is involved in that at the moment. Yes, Eleven left. 
So we picked the Ferro Creek route because it was supposed to be a nice gentle stroll along the side of a stream. Instead, it's been relentless. It looks like a fairly new trail actually. So I think that the uh, guidebook that I was looking at is just a little outdated. You can see where the old trail was. Uh, and uh, it was just sort of blocked off with a whole bunch of deadfall. And then all along where we've been walking, there's a whole bunch of fresh cut trees and stuff like that and um, flagging all the way along every you know, 50 meters or so. There's another piece of flagging just to make sure that you're on the right track. So I'm thinking that this part of the trail is relatively new for whatever reason they had to close down the old part. So it was not the gentle stroll bit that we were hoping for. Yeah, we're still just going up. It's, um, eventually, once we get up onto this ridge, this uh, evens out a little bit, or uh, drops back down to follow along with the old trail right next to the creek. So, we will see. There's a very scared little marmot in front of us here. He's uh, holding his ground though. It's okay buddy, you get out of the way. We'll leave you alone, I promise. Startled us though. It was really loud. Yeah. It's not even like what is he's doing now. Right now it's just kind of <laughs> he's just scared and wants us to go away. Yeah. I guess uh, whistling pass where we're going tomorrow. It's uh, it's called whistling pass for these guys because of the whistling sound that they make when you startle them. So. All right, we're gonna see if we can gently convince him to get out of the way so we can keep moving. Because it's raining and the mosquitoes are getting out of control. So we just passed the junction that goes up to uh, Faro Lake and um, Black Rock Lake. We're not gonna go and do the detour, even though it is fairly short apparently. It's just like seven o'clock already. And we're like 28 kilometers in and I'm tired. But as you see right across there, Pretty sure that right there is the Egypt Lake Shelter. So we are definitely getting close. <laughs> um, like I said, that place is available for rent. I don't know what the rates are or anything like that, but uh, if you want to, you know, sleep somewhere with a roof over your head, it is an option along this trail to do that. Looking at mosquitoes here. Every time we stop, they start swarming again. I have several big welts on my legs now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't been filming a lot, partly because, well, I'm really tired, and partly because it hasn't been all that interesting, <laughs> um, pretty much. what made it feel longer, too. Yeah, could be. Um, pretty much starting at the, uh, Faro Creek Junction, where we got onto this trail. It was mostly inland, or, like, mostly, uh, in the woods. Um, we did get a few nice views of the creek here and there, but nothing worth stopping in the rain to take the camera out. The Faro Creek campsite is small and very exposed. All the uh, all the campsites, all the camp uh, tent pads are just sort of huddled together and not a lot of privacy. Yeah, as a general rule, I would uh, or the general recommendation, I would say skip this leg. Not worth it. We will see, we'll have to compare to sort of the difficulty with uh, Whistling Pass that we're doing tomorrow, whether that, that is, uh, whether it was a right call or not to go this way. Um, but if you have the option, if it doesn't really matter for you, especially if you're doing this through hike style coming up Healy Pass and coming out the other way, uh, down near Arnica where we started, yeah, obviously you're going to want to do the, uh, the pass route, and it's probably not worth the second trip to come in go along Faro Creek at all. Uh, although like the you know, meadows down here are pretty nice and it's probably a good spot to see wildlife early in the morning or uh, later in the evening. So yeah. All right I'm gonna put this away and just push on through get to our campground and uh, get everything set up for the evening. Hopefully this rain is pretty much stopped at least for a while so we can get everything set up in uh, relative dryness.
here's a look at home last night. The uh, campsites are you know, fairly close together, but this one's nestled into some trees, so it's actually kind of uh, secluded. It's pretty nice. But uh, yeah, they are pretty close, pretty tight together. There's a couple of different sets of of uh, tent pads, though. So. Did you sleep? Good. Yeah. Really good. It took me a while to fall asleep, but once I was asleep, it was good. Nice. Yeah, I'm still sore though. Mm hmm. Yesterday was long. Yeah. What's the plan for today? Um, original plan or possible other plan? Yeah. So, our original plan was to go to Twin Lakes Campground. Right. Over Whistling Pass. Yep. Um,. About 20 kilometers. Other option is to still go over Whistling Pass, but you go straight up to the car. Mm. Mm -hmm. Tag on that extra 8K and just get her done. See how we feel. Yeah. Right now, that seems like a lot of work, but uh, see how we feel. Mm hmm. Alright. So, yesterday, when I filmed the what I thought was the shelter, and not the shelter. The shelter's actually just right over here. It must have been a uh, warden cabin across the land. Got a nice spot for a campground. A little far from water, though. Down the uh, down the hill over there, get to the stream for water, which we need to do. All right, on the trail again. D two, possibly of two. We we're originally going to do uh, go down to Twin Lakes and stay there. Tonight, that's still an option, but depending on how we're feeling when we get there, we might just push on for the extra eight kilometers and get out and get home tonight, <clears throat> late tonight. But tonight, so we don't have to deal with all the traffic and stuff tomorrow. Um, anyone who's ever traveled in Alberta on a long weekend knows that Highway 2 is a nightmare, so. If we can avoid that, that might be kind of nice. So, so we're just leaving the Egypt Lake campground right now. Um, it was a nice spot, for sure. The mosquitoes were, you know, out, but it's the first weekend of July, so that's to be expected. Uh, Egypt Lake is one of the most, if not the most popular um, site in, backcountry site in uh, Banff National Park, apparently. So. Reservations, definitely a good call if anyone's uh, planning on coming out this way. Um, yeah, so uh, it's actually really easy to get in here. Uh, if you take the Healy Pass route, uh, I think it's only 12 kilometers, something like that, uh, from Healy Pass, which is right by uh, Sunshine Village, uh, the ski hill. Uh, just sort of at the start of the Sunshine Access Road, there's a little offshoot, falls Healy Creek up over Healy Pass. So yeah, the uh, accessibility is really quite good. We obviously took the long route, um, but I think the most popular way to do this uh, this hike, especially the section we're doing today, is to go from Healy and just do it as a through hike over to uh, Vista Lakes Trailhead, where um, pretty much the exact route taking today so of course to do it that way you need two vehicles or you need to want to hitchhike um, we didn't so that's why we did the loop added on a whole whack load more kilometers uh, hopefully there's a little bit more to see today <laughs> yesterday was not great on the views um, it was it made the uh, 
the distance seem a lot more challenging actually just without having anything pretty to look at so so we're headed towards uh, Whistling Pass right now and uh, yeah it's about four and a half kilometers from here so when we get up there we'll for sure have something nice to look at so. and then we'll be dropping down into uh, Shadow Lake uh, we'll actually be able to go see the lake uh, like yesterday so we're just sort of on the outskirts by the lodge there Yeah, and then uh, back up the same way we came in from there. So should be good. It's already sunny and warm, but there's a nice breeze blowing, so it's very good hiking weather at the moment. And so hopefully it's gonna it's gonna keep up. All right, I'll check in when we get a little further along here and have some uh, some nice views to show you. One of the reasons that uh, Egypt Lake is so popular is it uh, makes an excellent base camp. It opens up a whole whack load of uh, cool day hikes. Um, I think if we were to come back and do this area again, we might just come into Egypt Lake and then do a bunch of little side trips from there. Uh, there's Pharaoh and uh, Big Rock Lakes, uh, Scarab, and uh, up in Egypt Lake itself because uh, it's Egypt Lake campground but it's not actually on the lake so yeah hopefully when we get up a little bit of elevation we'll have some nice views looking down at those areas um, also uh, there's the obvious uh, whistling pass uh, hike from there which is what we're doing and uh, you can even use Egypt Lake as a jumping off point to go down and uh, check out some of Mount Assiniboine. So here, we just hit a uh, trail sign. This lake pass is the way we're going. Can do a little jaunt up there to get a view of Egypt Lake, which I might do. I don't think it's very far, so. A little side trip. How far is it up? I don't know, very far, a kilometer, I think. Me. Okay. I'm just gonna double check the distance and then maybe we'll jaunt up there. So I'd say it's worth a little detour to come down here. There's only a couple hundred meters up the trail. And uh, yeah. It is a beautiful spot. think I'm glad that we came this direction yeah I think this is beautiful mm hmm and I would very much like to camp right here <laughs> yeah um, yeah definitely. or at least have breakfast very nice little spot yeah it was really close to camp Lossie. you come down here have your breakfast if you're hanging out at, uh, or at the campground or anyways wine or mm hmm yeah it'd be a nice place to have a end of uh, day cocktail so over here, there's a waterfall that's feeding the lake. So I'm pretty sure that Scarab Lake is uh, just up over that ridge. And that's what's uh, feeding this through that, uh, that outlet there. So, yeah. Very cool. So we're heading up <laughs> over this general direction somewhere uh, to get towards the pass. So, once we get some elevation, should definitely have some nice views of some peaks, but uh, this day has some, uh, some does, does. I'm already a lot more excited about today. Uh, yeah, yesterday was not yeah. very interesting. So, where are swimming? <laughs> go for it. Keep moving along.
along here. Do have a lot of distance to cover, so. I'm on top of the world. <laughs> well, up there is probably the top of the world, but. I'm part way up to the top of the world. Yeah. <laughs> the perspective never really comes through on a film, but uh, yeah, down here is uh, camp where we started out. And we're only 2.6 kilometers in, so we've come up a little ways. Bit. A little bit. There's uh, Egypt Lake down that way. Yeah. Pretty cool. to go. I'm guessing that's sort of the pass that we're headed for right up there somewhere. Would make sense. Yeah. There's our first glimpse of Scarab Lake. Uh, we're not going to go all the way down there because, well, the we don't want to come back up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, we should actually be up on a ridge and get a good view looking down on it. Not too not too far from here, but I just wanted to get a quick glimpse of it just in case we don't. Yeah, looks pretty nice. Another beautiful mountain lake. Um, I guess uh, Scarab Lake is the reason there's so much Egyptian terminology in all the uh, all the lakes and things around here. We've got Pharaoh Lake and Pharaoh Creek, Mummy Lake, Egypt Lake. Um, yeah, so. I guess the early surveyors saw Scarab Lake from up high, and they thought it looked like a scarab beetle, which is an Egyptian symbol, so they named it Scarab Lake, and then they had Egypt on the mind, so all the other naming around here sort of followed suit. Yeah. We just passed some people. Um, they said that there was some uh, very fresh bear tracks, bear scat, a little further down towards the lake there. So, definitely bears in the area this morning. So we got our eyes peeled, head on a swivel, making sure we're paying attention. Don't want to surprise anyone. Nice hiking so far today. Temperature's warm. Uh, been a nice cool breeze blowing though, so haven't been overheating or anything. Sun's ducking behind some clouds right now, which is actually kind of nice because we're getting a little bit more out into the open. Really looking forward to getting up to the pass and seeing what there is to see. Lots of little marmots scurrying around in the rocks here. We're almost up to Whistling Pass. Sort of the best view of Scarab Lake that we're going to get without going down to actually see the lake, unfortunately. Um, but whatever, still pretty nice. Bring by all the peaks. I'm really looking forward to seeing what we see from right at the top of the pass here. Aww, Should get a look. Each other. What? <laughs> a couple of them. And there's one off in the distance, Making screaming. That's why this uh, area is called Whistling Pass, actually. It's the, uh, the noise the marmots make. Uh, it's kind of the high-pitched screaming, whistling sort of sound, so... Yeah. Alright, should just be up over this ridge to get to the actual... The, uh, the cairn or signpost or whatever they got to mark the high point of the pass. So. First snow we've had to cross. Which is... Pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah, for the first of July. 
the first week of July is still definitely early season in the Rockies. Um, it's been an unusually warm and dry spring though, so things are pretty open. Which is, yeah, pretty cool. You know, usually you'd probably be coming across a lot more snowpack on this particular trip. <laughs> we were actually planning on coming out here in uh, September of last year, September long weekend, Labor Day long weekend. Uh, <laughs> we were coming out, plan on coming out here September long weekend last year, but it uh, ended up being a crazy monster blizzard. I think they got something like. Oh, I think it was more than that. I think it was more like a meter and a half of snow. So our tent probably would not have held up all that well in that kind of uh, dump. So what did we do? We went down to the cabin? Uh, no, we just came out of home. Oh, did we? Yeah, so you need to be cognizant of these things. If the weather is uh, really looking like it's going to sour on you and you're not prepared for that, you don't have the equipment for that, <laughs> Things can get pretty dangerous for sure. Huh. All right, this is looking pretty nice. Yeah, that looks like that might be the marker right up there. The way we came. Too many cairns. And almost snow free. Let's go up over this ridge here. Let's see what the view looks like going down into the valley there. No signpost or anything to actually mark the top of the pass. There usually is the elevation marker and stuff. Still, clearly the top because it's all downhill after this. Cool. So we dropped down from Whistling Pass to uh, High Duke Lake over there. Pretty steep descent. Scrambled across some uh, some boulders. Relentless downhill. Had to cross a couple of streams as well. So it's been pretty slow going, but pretty. it's been a gorgeous hike, actually. Um, yeah, this, this side of our trip is definitely living up to the hype as far as uh, the scenery and yeah, it's just been just been beautiful out here. So cook a little snack and we're gonna keep moving. Much better look at High Duke. Yeah, beautiful spot. Don't think that there's any uh, campground around here. There might be though. Be cool. Be a good spot for one. Yeah. Leelson in Park Santa. Get a camp spot here if there's not one already. Some uh, lakeshore hiking right there. Some better look at High Duke Lake. Beautiful spot. Couple cool waterfalls back there feeding the lake. Snow melt coming down. Awesome. 
All right, another campground, Ball Pass Junction. Um, obviously, we're just passing through, but <laughs> the uh, tent pads are very close to the very close to the trail. Not a whole lot of privacy. So Ball Pass is up that way. Again, a little uh, detour that's doable. That's supposed to be very, very nice. Um, just fantastic views uh, from the top of the pass, but. Once again, since we're uh, on a bit of a timeline, we're going to keep moving. No, no detours for us. We're on a mission. Mostly my feet and my legs are us. Yeah, that's fair. So we're just going to head up this way towards Shadow Lake. Um, so we're almost back to, well, almost a few kilometers up this way, I think, to get to Shadow Lake and then... Uh, We'll, we'll have finished a uh, loop, and then it's just sort of backtracking up over Gibbon Pass to get back out via Vista Lake. Yep. Cute little, uh, cute little campground. So it's just nestled right down in underneath these big peaks. Well, we made it to Shadow Lake. <laughs> A little bridge crossing the uh, outlet here. And that's the lake. Pretty awesome. Looks like a glacier sort of nestled up in here. just to hang out here. It's beautiful, peaceful, there's no one around. So, um, Shadow Lake Lodge itself isn't right on the lake, it's kind of uh, in back over here somewhere behind these trees. Yeah, back up over there somewhere. Definitely been no shortage of spectacular views on this section of the of the hike. I get why most people just do the uh, through hike up Healy, across Whistling Pass, and then down this way. It's a lot more satisfying than the section we did yesterday along Farrow Creek. Mm -hmm. I need to take off this, uh, yeah. Gibbon Pass Cairn. This marks the 20 kilometer mark for our hiking today. So we should have three or four kilometers to go to hit Twin Lake Camp or about 10 if we want to go all the way out. there. Mount Assiniboine sticking up looking all impressive and stuff. <laughs> so it gives you an idea. Um, Egypt Lake where we were uh, is actually an access point to head out that direction to Mount Assiniboine National Park. So covered quite a ways. Beautiful. This way is Copper Peak or something like that. It is scramblable. People who uh, stay at Shadow Lake Lodge go up there pretty regularly. That's a very tired looking Danny. Anyways, yeah, given pass. We didn't get a good look at it on the way up, so I figured I'd stop and get a good look at it on the way down. That is a car, not a tent. 
which means we pushed through. It's about 10 o'clock on Saturday night. 10 o'clock on the nose. 36 hours. <laughs> so right now, I need to take my boots off and I need to get a Gatorade and a Red Bull into my face because it's time to hit the road and get home. <laughs> but it means we get to sleep in our bed tonight. Oh, good job, Danny. Good job, Evan. <laughs> Alright, we doing Go that. Yourself. We are never doing this length ever again. Well, never say never. <laughs> Alright, we're not doing it tomorrow. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll do a little uh, post hike recap in a day or two, but right now we just need to get on the road. All right, so we made it home safe and sound from our Egypt Lake adventure. Uh, we ended up driving until about 3.30 in the morning before we finally got home. Definitely think it was the right call. Uh, we didn't have to deal with setting up camp, breaking down camp, and we got to sleep in our own bed, um, even though obviously we got in pretty late, so we didn't get a whole ton of sleep. But it ended up being um, just a little under 56 kilometers, a little under 27 hundred meters of total ascent and we ended up knocking it off in just over 36 hours so uh, it was kind of cool in that respect you definitely pushed the mileage a little bit which was pretty fun but I just feel like we left a lot uh, a lot unseen in in the area so we're gonna have to go back sometime hopefully with a little bit more time and uh, do a do a more thorough exploration all in all uh, pretty fun trip it was great to get out there Egypt Lake Campground itself, not one of my favorites. Um, the sites are all really close together, but the views aren't as spectacular as you would hope. It's super popular, mostly because it works as a really good jumping off point to see a lot of cool stuff. But as far as actually staying there, really enjoying the camping experience there, we've stayed at much better places. I don't know, I'm not sure what else there is to say, honestly, about this particular trip. Um, just that I feel like there's a, a better way to do it than what we did and if we were to go back we would definitely uh, spend some more time just to be able to explore a little bit more. That's a trip for another time though I guess so um, stay tuned. Uh, next up I believe we've got a trip in um, Yoho National Park, the Ice Line Trail. It's supposed to be one of the best trails in the Rockies so Stay tuned for that and a whole bunch more videos coming soon. As always, thanks for watching everybody. And uh, if there's any you know questions, comments, or you know suggestions or videos you'd like to see, anything like that, please feel free. I'd love to get that sort of feedback. And uh, yeah, check us out on uh, Instagram and our Facebook page. Uh, all the links are going to be in the description below. So thanks for watching. See you next time.